Good morning. Um, first of all, thank you very much to Bond for inviting me here today. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Um, I'm going to be talking about sport and physical activity um, and give my take on the role it can play in helping international development. <laughs> sport and physical activity had a massive effect on my life. Uh, I was born with spina bifida 50 years ago. Uh, I could walk a little bit, but as I grew up, I became paralysed. And my parents were told that if I'd been born two years earlier, I'd have been taken away and not fed and allowed to die. And if that wasn't enough of a shock for them, um, they were continuously told that I had no value and I couldn't contribute and I'd never get an education, I'd never get married, I'd never have children. This, there was this whole list of nevers. And the thing that changed that for me was being involved in physical activity. Um, it was about living in an inaccessible world, because 50 years ago there were no dropped curbs, no accessible toilets, no lifts. You didn't see disabled people out anywhere. Uh, and my father was very keen on me being physically strong so I could get to school on my own, so I could live independently. Um, I then got diverted into elite sport for about 25 years uh, and are now back talking about sport and physical activity from a, a slightly different point of view. Um, and also, as an athlete, I got to travel the world and, and see uh, the impact that sport had on so many different levels. Um, I'm a trustee of the Laurier Sport for Good Foundation, uh, and the foundation has been employing sports uh, for international development for almost 20 years. On a personal level, I believe in collaboration as a way to encourage debate and to think about creative solutions that can help tackle current issues in civil society. Um, and I'm really pleased that an increasing number of organisations are beginning to see the power and the potential of sport. Um, this includes so many of the organisations in the room and also the United Nations, who are now explicitly recognising sport as a key tool to achieving sustainable development goals by 2030. Um, I, I have a, a sort of a, quite a broad range of interest in this area. I'm also a supporter of the work of UNICEF and have been on um, several sports project visits with them. And it's particularly um, important in this anniversary, the 30th, uh, 30th anniversary of the UN Convention of the Rights of the Child, that these different pieces of work to come together. Um, when I think about development, uh, what it means, it can mean so many different things to different people. Um, People might consider it as, you know, development rapidly growing, something that gets bigger, gathers more money and power as it goes along. A businessman could measure development in terms of their business based on the size of their teams, the number of people they employ and their financial status. A local farmer might look at it in terms of the quality of their products or the way business comes sustainable. Um, for me, it's about how we can work together to make life better for everyone. Um, at the Laureus World Sports Awards in 2000, <laughs> Nelson Mandela said, sport has the power to change the world. It has the power to unite people in a way that little else does. Sport can awaken hope where there was previously only despair. Uh, and I think for me, those are really, really important words for me uh, to remember. The Academy, which is a group of uh, mostly retired athletes who believe in the power of sport, at that moment decided to set up the Sport for Good Foundation. Uh, and I'd like to iterate that this is not about making people do sport. It's not about developing the next group of elite athletes. It's about using sport to bring people together. Um, and for me, I've just seen in so many places around the world, sport can help people connect with themselves and with others because it's a universal language which communicates and reaches people from the most diverse backgrounds, religions, cultures and interests. Sport does imply that there's rules to follow, but it can transmit core social values such as respect, discipline, teamwork, hard work, which are really crucial elements to building an inclusive, equal <coughs> and a peaceful society. So our foundation, we support uh, about 190 programmes around the world. Uh, and I'd like to give you a few examples of the programmes that we support. Uh, there's a programme called MISA in Nairobi, where we reach 30,000 children through weekly football sessions. Uh, these sessions uh, are used as a platform to develop life skills, social skills, to discuss the importance of education, to convey messages regarding sexual and reproductive health, and the importance of HIV testing. Um, and as a result of the football, we're seeing much higher numbers of young people being tested. 
we see children um, doing better at school. We see them going to school. We see young people motivated to find their own way out. Um, in the UK, uh, one of our partners uses netball with adolescent girls to discuss and build awareness about life and challenges in social media, which is a growing challenge for all of us. And they use the rules of the game to illustrate the challenges metaphorically and discuss how tactics in the game are transferable to life in social media. That's called the Change Foundation. Uh, they have a taster session at 10.45 this morning, so a bit of a plug. Please go and have a look at that. Um, but for us, support comes in different forms. Uh, it's funding, it's training, and strategic counsel to ensure each project can, can provide the best possible opportunity to promote social change within their communities. Um, Sport for Good also challenges stereotypes and prejudice that otherwise sustains exclusion and marginalisation. You know, people living on the fringes of society have most often not chosen to be there. Um, and sport can provide a forum where disparate groups come together, where programmes are carefully established to build commonality rather than emphasise difference, and to build a bridge between demographics which don't normally engage with each other. Um, positive interaction and engagement promote respect and understanding between communities which are divided along ethnic, religious or other lines. Um, I've seen, uh, we have a project in Northern Ireland which brings children together from different religious groups. And the most amazing thing about that was <laughs> they'd been taught as children to dislike, almost hate each other until they met each other and then they realised they had so much more in common than they had against each other. Um, in terms of gender equality, Sport for Good um, is also an efficient tool to facilitate and engage international development sectors. Um, it's not just about equal representation, but more importantly, about equal opportunities. Um, and to achieve this, we um, fight things that prevent women and girls from full participation. We want more women and girls to step up as leaders. Um, and this is about educating people about violence um, against women and girls to institutionalise gender-based discrimination. It's about challenging the stereotypes. Um, and actually, it's about working with young men as much as young women, because we need to work together to bring about that change. Over the past year, through sports-based programmes, our partners have helped uh, deliver safe spaces for approximately 150,000 girls and young women. Uh, and of these, 25,000 were supported explicitly to reduce their risk of becoming victims of gender-based violence. We have to create... Um, uh, a sense of belonging for women and girls uh, and engage with everyone to bring about change for the future. Um, we um, have a project in Kenya which is called Box Girls, which um, gives voice, self-confidence, ambitions uh, to hundreds of young girls. Um, and that's really exciting, using the power of that sport. Um, I, I could give you a whole list of, of all the different things. I know from my um, personal experience of going to visit them, actually it changes my life as well. I think for me one of the most um, important projects I ever vid visited was going to Rwanda uh, and seeing the huge number of young boys who were leg amputees through the genocide and the girls who had HIV AIDS and how sport was able to reconcile so much of that. For me that was um, one of the, the biggest life-changing experiences that I've ever had the chance to, to, to be part of. So. I'm looking at the clock, I'm running out of time. If there were medals for talking, I might have won medals on the track, but if there were medals for talking, I would win. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm around for a little while afterwards, and we've got a, a, a team from, from Laureus uh, Sport for Good Foundation. If you'd like to know more or um, have a discussion, we'd be absolutely delighted to do that. Um, I think the thing that keeps me going every single day is, is remembering um, the words of Nelson Mandela. Sport does have the power to change the world. Uh, but the only way we'll do that is with collaboration, talking together, working together, and finding really smart ways that we can all help each other. Um, sport might not provide the answer to every single uh, opportunity, but it can actually do a huge amount to help people along the way. Um, and with 42 seconds left, I'm going to stop talking. Um, but final, final thing I want to say is, again, just thank you so much for inviting me here today. It's amazing to be in a room with people who will change the world. Thank you.